Good morning. How are y'all? All right, good. Could I have the lights down just a titch, please, so I can see up, uh, so I can see the audience? Thanks. How many of you lead busy and stressful lives by show of hands? Okay, I think I got about 100% of you. Uh, I do too. I'm married. I've got two children. Uh, I enjoy spending time with my family, my friends. I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm involved in my community. I'm a busy person, just like you. How many of you take time during your day to check in with yourself and find out how you're feeling, both emotionally and physically, by show of hands? Okay, great. Well, I learned a great exercise that I want to share with you and have you participate with me, and it's called Busy Schedules. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is please sit upright. Bring your attention to your posture. Not too rigid, not too soft. And then just gently close your eyes. And focus in on your breath. Breathing normally in through your nose, into your midsection, and out through your nose. Breathing in normally. And now in your mind's eye, I'd like you to picture a typical busy day. Where are you? Get a vivid picture of that. What time is it? Who are you with? What are you doing? Grab a good picture of what that busy day looks like. And now check in. What's it feel like? What emotions are you feeling? Maybe you're excited. Maybe you're frustrated, calm, stressed out. Just identify those emotions. Hold on to them for a minute. And now, what physical sensations do you have? What's your body feel like? Tired? Energy? Maybe your back feels tense. Maybe you have a headache. Tap into the physical emotions for a minute. OK, please open your eyes. Who could share with me some of the emotions you were feeling during your busy day or some of the physical sensations you had? Please just yell it out. Help me out here. Stressed. Stressed? Thank you. Lack of focus. Lack of focus. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Energized. Energized. Tightness. Tightness. Tired. Tired. <laughs> yes. When we check in and we are able to feel those emotions and understand where we're at at, every, at any given moment during our day, in the present moment. And knowing the reactions that can come along with those, it can make a big difference in how we show up with those around us. So please keep that in mind as I continue on with our talk together. I want to share a little bit with you about my story. And I'll start in 2005. It was less than one year after I had sold my business to a public company. And I'd happened to be on vacation uh, that summer with my family in northern Michigan at our home. And it was a beautiful day. And they were out enjoying it, as they should have been. And I was inside working and frustrated, angry. I felt out of control. Verge of tears, and I looked over at this chair. 
And I said to myself, Rob, go sit in that chair and breathe in and breathe out. And I did. And I actually felt a little bit better. My problems didn't go away. My frustrations were ever present. But I actually felt a little bit better because I checked in. I got aware of the present moment. Growing up, I had all types of health issues. I had severe asthma. I had eczema, which is a skin disorder. I had a heart irregularity. And I think I may have been one of the first children that had a peanut allergy. Uh, sorry about that to, to, to those that have young kids. I think I started the trend there. I also was dealing with uh, many family issues. And they were causing me a lot of stress and anxiety. <clears throat> but on the outside, you would have never known it. I was really organized. Uh, I was studious. And I always showed up and did the right thing. But I later found out that these were all symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder. In ninth grade, I started selling blow pop lollipops out of my locker with my best friend, Joel Perlman. That is him on your, on your right, on my left. And we'd have kids lined up and down the hallways. We'd buy those things for a nickel and resell them for a quarter. Best business and margins that we ever had, uh, even to date. And it would only uh, make sense that after we graduated college with very little in the way of prospects for a job, that we would start our own company together out of our basement. And that was in 1991. And we started the company that we own and operate today together called Image One. Right after starting my business, about a year later, I decided to get married. And two years later, my wife and I had our first child, our son, William. And in that span of time, starting a business with my best friend, uh, getting married to another one of my best friends, and having a child did not help with the stress and anxiety that had been building up over the years. And somewhere along the way, I realized I wasn't as good of a person that I wanted to be, but more importantly, that I needed to be. And so back to that chair, that's the time in my life I like to call pre-chair Rob. And the day that I went and I sat in that chair is the day that I realized that maybe this mindfulness meditation thing might be useful to me. But I'm a pretty skeptical person, and I'm also a fact finder. So I decided to dive in and become a student and a practitioner. And I learned that there had been 6,700 studies on meditation since 1972, 4,500 alone in the last 10 years, all of which exude the benefits of meditation. I learned that branches of the United States and British military were teaching meditation to their servicemen and women. And I also learned that companies all over the world had been incorporating meditation into their health and wellness programs. I learned that it would be beneficial to take extended silent retreats where there's no talking, which I started to do for up to seven to 10 days at a time. And I started to do this as an annual thing one or two times per year. And people would ask me, what goes on at those re silent retreats? You just sit around and do nothing? And well, kind of, yeah, we do. We sit and we meditate. We learn proper technique. We learn how to breathe in and breathe out. We learn how to sit properly. Uh, we mindfully walk. We mindfully eat. and. We do some stretching and yoga to make sure that we stay limber. As a rule of thumb, there's no talking, there's no reading, no writing, and if you can help it, no eye contact. So um, it's been something that's been very beneficial to help me hone in on my meditation practice. And I'd like to share with you what I've learned 
uh, over the past uh, 14 years in doing this practice this morning. So I'm going to ask for you to get yourself comfortable and sit forward in your chair if that's comfortable for you and sitting upright. If it's not comfortable for you to be off the back of your chair, that's okay, but ideally you want to be holding yourself up. And gently place your hands on your legs. And make sure that your feet are apart, not together. And bring your awareness to your feet, firmly planted on the ground. Feel your feet in your shoes if you're wearing them or on the ground if you're not. Feel what that feels like. Maybe your, maybe your shoes feel tight or loose. And now bring your attention to your hands resting gently on your legs and what that feels like, the sensations that you're feeling. And now, your attention to your bottom on the seat. Maybe the seat's soft. Maybe it's hard. And now bring your attention to your posture. Seated upright, not too rigid, not too soft. Now slightly bring your chin down and your gaze down, about a foot or so in front of you, kind of like a fuzzy gaze, or like if you're like me, I prefer to close my eyes. And now bringing your attention to your breath, breathing in normally through your nose, into your midsection, and out through your breath, through your nose. Again, Breathing normally in through your nose, down into your midsection, and out through your nose. Follow your breath. Now inevitably, you'll have many thoughts entering into your mind. That's normal. We're not trying to clear our mind. We're trying to be aware of our thoughts, the present moment, simply coming back to our breath, breathing in normally through our nose, into our midsection, and back out through our nose. Thoughts are okay, and when you notice them, maybe just say something like thinking and allow that be an indicator for you to go back to your breath. You'll also likely be hearing some noises. There'll be some shuffling, somebody might sneeze or cough, a phone might ring, the staff might be moving some silverware or plates, or a siren from a, an ambulance might go by. That's just life happening around us. You don't need the perfect place to meditate, to check in, to become present and aware. Let those noises just be an indicator to you to come back to your breath and breathing in normally through your nose to your midsection and out through your nose, being aware of the present moment right here, right now.
And now, bringing your awareness back to your body. Your feet firmly planted on the ground. Your hands resting gently on your legs. Your bottom on the seat. And slowly, if you have your eyes closed, open your eyes. If you're gazed forward, bring your eyes back to a clear vision. Become aware of your surroundings, the people around you, the energy around you, the auditorium here, all the people. You just checked in. When you feel, when you, when you stop during your day and kind of check in and say, here's how I'm feeling, this is a great exercise to sit down and just focus in on your breath and bring yourself to the present moment. Just curious, how long was that where we sat in silence? Just shout out some times. Say again. Two minutes. Five minutes? It was one minute. <laughs> Usually, many people say that's the longest minute of their lives. <laughs> OK, so back to that chair. This is the time in my life that I like to refer to as post-chair Rob. Uh, it's a time where I'm on a journey. I know I'm more present and aware. Uh, I'm a little bit better of a person. Uh, but it's going to take me a while to get there. And in 2006, Joel and I had a very unique opportunity to buy our company back, and we did choose to do that. And when we did, we decided that we really wanted to bring a bigger focus on people. <clears throat> we wanted to focus on life balance, uh, not work-life balance, as if there's two separate, as if they're two separate things. Because we realized that the, the people at our, on our team and the people that we work with, whether they're our partners or our customers, I mean, they're really just like me. And we wanted to cultivate a, a culture where we cared for the totality of our team members' lives, as inspired by the book Small Giants. Because we realized that those people around us, they just really want to be happy, just like me. And so I learned throughout this journey I've been on a really wonderful exercise. Can you guess what it's called? Just like me. So I'd like to share that with you uh, this morning. So again, back to that posture that we just held together. Sitting upright, off, your back off the back of the chair. Your feet firmly planted on the ground and your hands resting gently on your legs. Your posture upright, not too rigid, not too soft. And you can bring your chin down slightly and close your eyes for this one. Start by bringing your awareness to your breath. Breathing in through your nose, into your midsection, and out through your nose. Breathing normally. And focus in on that for a moment. Breathing normally. And now in your mind's eye, I'd like you to picture a mirror. And I'd like for you to look into the mirror and see yourself. Take a good look at yourself. Look in the mirror and wish yourself love and kindness, health and healing, safety and security. And follow my words. Look in the mirror and wish yourself love and kindness, health and healing, safety and security. And now in your mind's eye, Get a picture of somebody that you love dearly, unconditionally. Get a good picture of them in your eyes. And wish them love and kindness, 
health and healing, safety and security. And now, in your mind's eye, find a picture of somebody neutral in your life. Somebody that you see who might even be helpful to you, but you don't really have a relationship or a knowledge about them. Could be the person that you see each morning at the coffee shop or the grocery store in the evening. And wish them love and kindness, health and healing, safety and security. And now in your mind's eye, find a picture of somebody that causes some challenges for you in your life. Maybe a more difficult person, causes you a little angst at times. Get a good picture of them and wish them love and kindness, health and healing, safety and security. They're just like you. They just want to be happy. And now in your mind's eye, get a picture of somebody that you've met over the last two days at this conference. A new friend, an old friend, somebody that you just saw across the way and wish them love and kindness, health and healing, safety and security. And maybe, just maybe, you'll share that with them later. And now, briefly take yourself up above the earth, not too high, but far enough that you can see the seven or eight billion people going about their days and nights, looking down on them and wishing them all love and kindness, health and healing, safety and security. Because whether you agree with them or not, they just want to be happy, just like me. Okay, now please bring your awareness back to your feet planted on the ground, your hands on your legs, your bottom on the seat. You can open your eyes and re-associate yourself with the room, with the people around you, and with the energy.